It's very common for Christians to worry about, how do I know that I'm saved? Well, I have good news for you. In the Presbyterian tradition, you don't just have to look to your good works. You also look to the Holy Sacraments. Hey guys, welcome back to Kingdom Craft, where I build this big church. It's actually starting to look like a building-ish now, while I talk about Christianity. So I'm doing a short series on the Presbyterian view of things, and today's topic is the sacraments. This is a topic I've been very interested in lately. So in the last episode, when I talked about predestination, I said there's quite a disconnect between, you know, the historical Calvinist view of predestination and the modern Calvinist internet sort of casual view of predestination. So in this episode, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to claim something similar. I am going to claim that the historic Presbyterian view of the sacraments is very different from what you'll hear in a lot of modern Presbyterian churches, especially in America. So, um... One thing you have to know about Christianity in America is, regardless of what denomination it is, if it's Protestant and it's part of the broader evangelical group, like, for example, the Presbyterian Church in America, it's going to be very influenced by Baptist theology, even if they won't admit it. So, um, the Baptists, their view of the sacraments, if they even call them sacraments, is that they're just symbols. They're nothing else. They, they symbolize important things, but they don't actually do that which they symbolize in any real sense. They're, they're, just, they're just symbols. They remind us of it. So the two sacraments are baptism and the, the Lord's Supper or communion or the Eucharist. So they would say, you know, um, the bread and wine in the Lord's Supper symbolize the body and blood of Christ, but we don't actually receive the body and blood of Christ in any real sense. Um, it's just we remember that Christ's body was broken for us and Christ's blood was shed for us. Um, likewise, uh, when they talk about baptism, they're like, oh, it symbolizes, you know, being born again, being saved, but baptism doesn't actually save in any real sense. So now, um, a lot of, um, if you um, hear from a lot of Presbyterian churches, they will talk in a similar way. They'll say things like, you know, baptism is a sign and a seal of, you know, God's covenant. Um, but it doesn't actually do anything. It, it's, it's nothing more than a sign. I, I have actually heard Presbyterian pastors these days say things like that. But if you read, you know, Calvin, if you read John Knox, who's the founder of Presbyterianism, if you read uh, the Confessions, that's clearly not what they say. So um, the Reformed, um, which is synonymous with Calvinist, which is what the Presbyterians believe in, at least historically, the Reformed view of the sacraments, you can find this in like all the Reformed confessions, including Westminster, which is the main Presbyterian confession. In every sacrament, there is a spiritual relation or a sacramental union between the outward sign and the inward reality that's being signified. So every sacrament, meaning baptism and communion, they each have two parts to them. There's um, the outward sign and the inward reality being signified. So, what does that mean exactly? So, for, for baptism, the outward sign is water. is the, the, the sprinkling or pouring of water. That, that's the way Presbyterians do it. Um, we don't immerse um, someone in the water when we baptize. We, we just sprinkle or pour water. Now, um, the Bible doesn't say which one to do. The early church writings say either way is fine. Um, so, yeah. That's the outward sign. And it symbolizes the fa um being born again being baptized with the holy spirit so being baptized with water symbolizes being baptized with the holy spirit we would agree with the baptists there but we would say the sign is connected to the thing signified it does symbolize it but it doesn't just do that it also is connected in a real sense to the thing signified and the sacrament of baptism refers not just to the outward sign, which is baptism with water, but also to the inward reality signified. So basically, there, there are two parts of baptism. There's baptism with water and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But those two, we, we can't separate the two. According to the Reformed, you can distinguish the two, meaning they're not the same thing. They don't necessarily occur at the same time, even. But you can't separate them. So because baptism is uh, made up of two parts, the sign and the thing signified, 
The sign, the outward sign, baptism with water, does not save, but the inward reality signified, baptism of the Holy Spirit, does save. Because of that, we believe it's right to say baptism saves. Um, so, yeah, Presbyterians believe that baptism saves, but not in the same way that Catholics or the same way that Lutherans believe it does, because we, we do properly distinguish the sign and the thing signified. The water itself does not save. Um, but we believe that God saves someone through the sacrament of baptism. So under, under ordinary circumstances, of course, God is free to work however he chooses, but under ordinary circumstances, he chooses to work through baptism. So yes, that is the Presbyterian view of baptism. What about the Lord's Supper? So um, Catholics believe in what's called transubstantiation. They believe that the physical body, the physical bread and wine, change substance into the physical body and blood of Christ when the when the Eucharist is celebrated. Now, Presbyterians do not believe that. We believe, but the Baptists have an opposite extreme that we do not agree with either. They believe that um, the bread and wine merely symbolize the body and blood of Christ. So Catholics are saying that it physically becomes the body and blood of Christ, and Baptists are saying, oh, it just symbolizes the body and blood of Christ. We say that we do receive the body and blood of Christ, but in a spiritual, not a physical manner. Here's what we mean by that. So, um, we, because, again, in each sacrament, there's a connection, there's a connection between the sign and the thing signified. So the outward signs are the bread and wine, and the, or rather the, the eating of the bread and wine, and the inward realities being signified are our souls being nourished with Christ's, phys with Christ's, not physical, but real body and blood. So, um, what hap Like when the Bible says that Christ lives in us, we become more like Christ. We take that literally. We believe that when we receive the physical bread and wine, our souls spiritually feed on Christ to become more like him. So it, it's not just a symbol. Of course, we, we, be we don't believe the bread and wine stop being bread and wine, but when we do that, by faith, of course, um, so it, this wouldn't really happen for someone who's not a Christian, but by faith, when we receive the physical bread and wine, our souls spiritually receive the real body and blood of Christ. So, um, the Reformed Presbyterian view of communion is often called a spiritual presence view, as opposed to a, a physical presence, which is true, but some people misinterpret that. Some people say, oh yeah, we believe Christ is spiritually present in communion, just the way he's spiritually present everywhere, but no, we, there, there's, a, there's a distinction between the manner in which Christ is spiritually present in communion and the manner in which Christ is spiritually present, you know, in all other, at, at all other times. Because it's not just a presence, we actually receive the body and blood of Christ. So yeah, it's, it's not, it is, so that's why I don't think spiritual presence is the best term. I think real presence is the best, and it's, that real presence is, communi is communicated to us in a spiritual way rather than a physical manner. Um, there, the, the Lutherans, it's, um, I guess you could say, in between the Reformed view and the Catholic view. They believe that Christ is physically present in the bread and wine, but they don't believe that it stops being bread and wine. They'd say Christ is physically present in, with, and under the bread and wine. And um, some people label that view consubstantiation, but they reject that view, so I'm not going to use it. Uh, they don't like that label. Okay, so yeah, that is the Reformed view of the sacraments. So basically, um, in John chapter 6, Jesus said, um, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. We take that literally. And um, in 1 Peter 3.21, um, St. Peter says, uh, talks about the flood and how um, Noah, and, Noah and his family were saved through the waters of the flood. He says, the flood symbolizes baptism, which now saves you. So, you know, the Baptists will say um, uh, baptism is a symbol. He, do he doesn't say um, baptism symbolizes the flood. Peter says the flood symbolizes baptism. Um, baptism isn't the symbol. It's the thing being symbolized. You can't symbolize a symbol. That makes no sense. So, yeah, of course, baptism is not a mere symbol. Um, and he says explicitly baptism saves. It says that in the Bible. The, the, I looked at the Greek. It's uh, soze baptisma. Soze meaning save and baptism meaning baptism. Baptism saves. Um, but then he goes on to clarify, it's not by the washing of dirt from the body. So he, he does clarify that it's not the physical water that saved. It says uh, it saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
So um, a lot of people, when they hear us say that baptism saves, they're like, okay, wait, I thought Protestants believe salvation is by faith alone. Doesn't that contradict that? And we would say no. So, of course, the doctrine of sola fide, salvation by faith alone, was coined by Martin Luther. But Martin Luther had an even stronger view of um, the, the sal the, that baptism saves than Presbyterians do. So, is there a contradiction? No. Um, there, is no there is no contradiction between saying baptism saves and saying that salvation is by faith alone. So, like, like I said, um, baptism is a sacramental union of the sign and the thing being signified. So the sign is water, and the thing being signified is regeneration. Is The thing being signified is faith, basically. So I wouldn't say baptism is something in addition to faith one needs to be saved. I would say, in a real sense, baptism includes faith. So because of that, there's no contradiction between saying baptism saves and that salvation is by faith alone. Now, is it possible for someone to be saved without being baptized? We would say, yes, it's possible, but that's not the ordinary means by which God saves us. So Westminster says something, I'll, I'll put it up on the screen, um, says something like, um, salvation is not, not so tied, God is not so tied to the sacraments that salvation cannot occur without it. Um, but that's why we say it's under ordinary circumstances. So, you know, someone converts on a plane and then the plane crashes, you know, they're not damned. Okay. Um, if someone, you know, really knows what baptism is, that it is a real engrafting into Christ and still chooses not to get baptized. Okay. Then were they even really saved to begin with? Because, you know, why, why would they not want that? So um, I'm not going to like analyze every single case like, okay, what about this? What about this? The point is, it is the ordinary means by which God works to save us. And what about the Lord's Supper? Does the Lord's Supper save? In a sense, I mean, kind of, I'd say it applies, pertains more to sanctification, making us more holy because it, when we receive the body and blood of Christ, we really become more like Christ. But, you know, John 6 does say that when we become like Christ, it's sort of nourishing the nourishing the spiritually alive part of us. So in, in a sense, it's I think it's right to say that um, there is a salvation aspect in the Lord's Supper. You know, one of the elders at my church who is deeply rooted in the Reformed tradition, when he would um, give us the, the cup, he would say, this is the cup of salvation. So um, both of the sacraments in that sense are something you can look to for assurance of salvation. The promises of the gospel are objectively... Um, it objectively offered in the sacraments, and all we have to do is receive them by faith. So it's it's a lot it's a lot less worrisome than if you're part of a tradition that says the only thing you can look to for assurance of salvation is you know your own your own good works. And a lot of Baptist churches are like that. So that's about it for today. Uh, I I could go way more into depth on this issue, and I will. But this is just a brief summary because of the series I'm doing. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye.